Hi, this is Pat with Code Academy. I'm a web developer based in Washington, D.C. If you've been wondering what front-end web development is, you've come to the right place. Even if you have some experience, it can be incredibly confusing. If you're a seasoned web developer, it feels like the definition changes yearly. And if you're not a seasoned web developer, it feels like the definition changes yearly. So in this video, we're going to talk about what are some of the timeless basics that makes front-end web development front end. I'll also cover some of the up-to-date industry practices so that we can stay relevant, as well as some of my own experiences because I am a front-end web developer. Let's get started. So what is the front end? Well, put simply, the front end is the part of the website that a, a user or customer interacts with. So they load up your website, dub do dub and they go there, and what they pull up, what they see is your website. Now, if you have any background in web development, you know that there's a ton that goes on behind the scenes. It's not what what a user pulls up is not just what it sees. Uh, that's just that's just the front end. But it's often assumed that that is your website. So when you go to Amazon, you know you're not there. You're not going there to to get uh, get a feel for how it looks. You're there to buy stuff. But when we think of what Amazon's website is, we're not thinking about their backend logic. We're not thinking about their database architecture or their scaling solutions. Uh, all of the stuff that goes into making a solid web application kind of gets lumped into the front end. So when we think of the front end, um, it is the part of the website that a user interacts with. Uh, and so what that means is that is that front end is building the web pages styles. This is going to be the buttons and the inputs and the layout, the text, the images, the pagination, even as far as how the website loads, how quick it loads and accessibility practices if you're injured or, or disabled. Uh, this is this is all front end stuff. And so what are the common tasks of a front end web developer? So. A day to day could look like updating a company's web page, and this could be a small update or even a larger update, like creating a new layout for for the new website. And it could be as huge as creating an entire new page or an entire new application for uh, for a company. And um, and and in addition to that, there are smaller uh, front end tasks that could be building HTML emails for email campaigns. Uh, you could be making sure that a website is working correctly on mobile and tablet devices because, you know, we're all on our phones these days. We're all pulling up web pages on the phone. Um, reducing a page's load time. So this could be cleaning code, ripping out old code that doesn't need to be loaded, or even code splitting so that you're only loading the stuff that you need. And making sure that a web page is usable by people with disability or injuries. Th this is all good front-end stuff, but when we come down to the technology of front-end, there are th three big technologies that are associated with front end and that's going to be HTML, CSS and JavaScript. HTML stands for the hypertext markup language and you can think of it as the skeleton of a web page. Uh, it is both the structure and the content of the page. Uh, CSS is the skin and the clothes of the web page if HTML is a skeleton. Uh, CSS is the styles. It stands for cascading style sheets. And then JavaScript is the interaction, so uh, how the page moves and the way that you can and work with it. JavaScript is a, a language that can be executed both in the browser and on the server, which makes it a very versatile and quick programming language to use. So these are the three big technologies that go into the front end. Uh, and so, so if, if you want to drill down into that, you know, where do we see the front end? So an analogy that I find helpful to some learners is imagine you walk into a coffee shop to get a cup of coffee. You know, what, how does it look when you go inside? What are the fonts, colors, and um, what, what sort of signage do they have? What kind of branding do they have around? That is going to be the front end. But you're not there to look at the place. You're there for coffee. In order to get it, you have to place an order with the barista based off of what's off that menu. You have to interact with uh, the barista, but they can't make it without the ingredients. So uh, they are going to go get the milk and the syrups and the creams and the coffee beans. The front end is what enables you to interact with the back end. But the back end is only the process of giving you the ingredients that you asked for in the form that you're expecting. 
So for some everyday examples, uh, we, we could take, go back to Amazon, for example. The, the pictures, the descriptions, and, and all the buttons and, and the, the fonts, the descriptions, that's all front end. That's the interface. So the next question is, how does all this come together? So there's front end designers, and sometimes these are uh, referred to as user interface developers. Uh, as opposed to front-end engineers or JavaScript engineers, front-end designers or user interface developers, they don't deal with a lot of functionality necessarily. Uh, what they're trying to do is they're trying to take the designs that came from a, either a design agency or the design team, or maybe they made them themselves, and they're turning them from static images into actual functioning web pages. Uh, and this is... Uh, a, a skill in and of itself because uh, getting stuff pixel perfect and doing it at mobile sizes and tablet sizes is a real challenge. As opposed to JavaScript engineers or front-end engineers, these are uh, the types of front-end developers that aren't as pixel perfect. Uh, they might not consider themselves design inclined. What they're trying to do, they're trying to wrangle this massive application and do it in a scalable and efficient way so that it can be styled and look correct. So sometimes front engineers also do uh, design work as well. So it kind of depends on where you work, but there's typically two kinds of specializations. So if you're new to web development, you're probably confused about where the front end starts, where graphic design fits in, and how does it relate to user experience design. Let's start with user experience design. So user experience design is the research, testing, and study of how users interact with something. They want to know how a user interacts with a website. Is it is it easy to use? Is it hard to use? Are users lost when they get there? Who is your target demographic? Um, and user experience interfaces are the product of that research. Now, good front-end developers don't need to be user experience designers, but they do need to understand what they're building, and they need to understand that, that is the product of user experience research. But at some point, we have to start making design choices to represent the kind of image that we want to show. We have to start picking colors, we have to start picking fonts and styling choices. So how a website looks and feels is very much intertwined with all the design choices that we've made. And as front end, we implement the design choices of both our user research team and our branding team. So this is us then, this is front end. We build the interfaces. We are pulling together the decisions that were made from the UX team and also the graphic design team. Our canvas is the browser. So a big one here is cross browser compatibility. Of all the technologies that are available to us as front-end developers, sometimes those outdate what is currently available for certain people. Keep in mind that not everybody auto-updates their browser. So if they have a browser that is older than the technology that we're using, it just won't understand the technology that we're trying to push forward. So a lot of the great new features in CSS are kind of out of reach for older versions of Internet Explorer. And depending on where you work, that can be a huge problem. And then another big one is the screen size. So our phones are taller than they are wide, but tablets are kind of in the middle of that because you can turn them in a couple of different directions and reorient your content accordingly, but then browsers are wider than they are tall. So this makes it kind of challenging to have a unified design that looks consistent across all different device types. In terms of tools of the trade, there's a couple of patterns that we see pretty consistently. Uh, one is going to be the CMS, the content management system, and this is going to be WordPress or Drupal, and these, these two power a significant amount of the web. There are other ways of achieving a front end. These are pretty popular right now, especially with a lot of companies. Uh, these are going to be your frameworks and libraries like React and Angular and Vue. And where these come from is that they they took an approach of seeing, okay, we have a lot of similarities and commonalities across this website. Like they're, you know, these buttons all look the same. They're all the same size, they're all the same color. These images all need to be consistently the same. Why are we creating it one by one? And so what they do is they they tend to build what are known as classes. And these are gonna be like, you know, blueprints for, okay, this button is gonna look like this. And that's why these these libraries have come into favor is that it makes, if you have, you know, thousands of buttons on your website, can you imagine trying to maintain each and every single one of them so that 
they're all consistent, it, it drive you mad. Uh, that's why these libraries are so powerful. So the last thing I want to talk about here is why front end is so important. I think that this is something that gets that doesn't get as much coverage because we're so concerned with building uh, front ends that we figure out that the why is important. It is the digital representation of a company, of an individual, or an organization. So when there's incongruence there, when there's small problems there, or even spelling mistakes, like this, this can have. Uh, drastic implications for that brand because the front end allows a user to use that service or that website or contact that individual. So it's building the bridge between a customer and a product or service. The harder it is to use that website, it tarnishes the brand and in some cases it can actually repel customers. Any company hearing that would probably bristle because the whole point of having a website is so that it's, it's available for you to use. Something also fundamental about the front end is that it is also the manifestation of somebody's idea, maybe even their dream. This at some point, somebody had an idea and it can actually get a little bit emotional because this is the realization and the visualization of what they've been trying to accomplish. You know, we don't get to see the back end as it and in all of its majesty and we don't get to see the database we do get to visualize what the front end looks like. And so oftentimes it's a disproportionate amount of credit for how a website looks and works, but it also gets a little bit more of the blame for how a website looks and works. So the front end kind of bears a little bit of a disproportionate load for our emotions about how we feel about a company or a service. It is an emotional reality of how the web works. This is Pat with Co Academy. I really hoped you enjoy watching this video, but did I answer all of your questions? Do you have any others? Leave a comment below or subscribe to this channel. I love responding to learners' questions. Check out the video description below for a ton of useful links related to front end web development. And if you're ready to start your career in programming, come on over to Code Academy and we'll help you get started.